Welcome to the Imperfectly Empowered Podcast with leading DIY lifestyle blogger, Anna Fulmer, where women are inspired with authentic stories and practical strategies to reclaim their hearts and homes by empowering transformation, one imperfect day at a time. Hi, I am your host, Anna Fulmer at the Imperfectly Empowered Podcast. And today we are going to talk seven tips to help you establish an early morning routine. We want to increase productivity, improve mood, and achieve your goals with these seven tips to establish an early morning routine. I never liked getting up early. I am not an early morning riser by nature. And even more horrifying than getting up early is the thought of getting up early to work out, right? Like who are these people? Uh, In fact, one of the most unpleasant memories I have from my earlier years was in high school when we would run at our coach's house during the early morning hours during track season. My dad, who also happened to be a track coach, would have to drag me out of bed at 5.30 or 6 in the morning, 40 degree weather. Like, who are these people? Why did I do this to myself? I still don't know the answer to that question Um, because I certainly was not going to become vertical of my own accord. My dad had to drag me out of bed. But what my coach understood is that in order to be the best, you had to put in the work when everyone else was taking it easy or in this scenario, sleeping, something I would have much preferred to be doing. However, that is probably why we won leagues. We went on to win districts. We competed at States. We had the honor of competing at the prestigious pen relays for several years in a row. This same concept of putting in the work, even if you don't feel like it, it applies not only to sports, but to your relationships, your job, your health, and your general ability to feel satisfied in life. More often than not, you have to do the things you don't feel like doing in order to get the thing you want the most, whatever that may be. So let's take a quick look at some of the reasons why becoming an early morning riser could actually help you get the life that you want. One research study found that early risers, those who routinely woke up between 4 to 7 a.m., reported higher incomes, better health, and a greater sense of satisfaction with life than later risers or those who woke up after 7 a.m. Yet another research study found that early risers were significantly more proactive and productive. But are you ready for it? Here is the good news. Here. Here is the good news because I needed this good news. According to that first study that I mentioned of successful early morning risers, only 50% claimed to be a morning person by nature, while the other half reported that they learned to become an early morning riser. I am here to report that I uh, align with the second half. I became an early morning riser. Y'all, this is good news because if I can do it, you most definitely can do it. And I'm going to be sharing my seven tips that have helped me establish a consistent, successful early morning routine. Let me first explain to you how I even established this early morning routine, meaning why, how did I even get into this habit? Well, as many of you already know, I am a nurse practitioner by trade. I have two specialties, adult geriatric critical care and family medicine. I worked in the emergency department for 10 years. And about three years ago, I started blogging as a hobby. My husband and I have renovated multiple fixer uppers. It was a great investment opportunity and we've just kind of kept rolling with it. Well, I started blogging as a fun way of digitally scrapbooking our DIY adventures. It was the creative outlet that I needed. Uh, It didn't involve blood or body parts, which is always a win. (laughs) And I fell in love. I did. I fell in love with the world of digital scrapbooking, but I quickly discovered that the only time that I really had to myself to focus in and write these blog posts was first thing in the morning when I had little kids still at home, there was no way for me to truly focus in and write blog posts during the day. So instead of getting up around 7 a.m., which is what I was usually doing to help my kindergartner get ready for school at the time, I set my alarm back a little bit earlier, Monday through Friday, to 6.20 a.m. Notice I didn't set it back to 4 a.m. I set it back to 6.20 a.m. This was a reasonable place for me to start. 
And it was a random time, but it carved out just enough of the day. Remember y'all, I love my sleep. <laughs> I was like, just to the minute, as early as I needed to, just perfectly to get done what I needed to get done. So Monday through Friday, I would wake up at 6.20 a.m. It gave me just enough time to um, you know, write the two blog posts a week that I was publishing at the time. And um, it gave me a couple of minutes to read my Bible, chat with Jesus, get my head straight, and then 20 or so minutes of quiet productivity before the troops descended. I was inconsistent at best, but imperfect progress is better than no progress at all. Let me say that again, in case any of you are new around here. Imperfect progress is better than no progress at all. I loved this early morning routine so much that a couple months later, I pushed the clock back even more because I wanted to spend more time in the quiet on my own before the chaos of the day. For about a year, I got up Monday through Friday morning at around 6 a.m. Fast forward to uh, about, oh, it was probably like a year and a half ago now, we were settled into this current home that I'm filming in right now, our third fixer upper. And shocker, a novel virus shut down the world. Thank you, COVID. And in the midst of it, I was still seeing steady growth and income blogging and expanded my expertise into the world of virtual fitness and nutrition coaching. During this time, I was still routinely working out in the afternoon as I had done for my whole life. You know, it's interesting when I talk to people about establishing an early morning routine, one of the things that has come up frequently is for those of us that played sports for years, I truly believe we are mentally conditioned to work out in the afternoon. I really, really think that is true because it was so unfathomable to me to work out in the morning. I could not get myself to do it. I tried many times over the years because it makes so much sense. There's so much good research to support an early morning workout. Uh, but I really, really struggled. And I've talked to other athletes, especially those who then played sports in college as I did. I ran track for two years in college as well. And it's really difficult to change the time. There's like this mental conditioning that oh, I work out in the afternoon. So after eight years of sports, I was mentally conditioned to exercise in the afternoon and between work and kids, my workouts were becoming unpredictable and haphazard. So when I became a fitness coach for the faster way to fat loss, more information about that on my blog at hammersandhugs.com. When I became a fitness coach for this program, I determined that if I was going to ask my clients and followers to embrace the struggle of transformation and claim imperfect progress and new habits that I needed to cultivate a new habit myself and start to work out in the morning, you guys, <laughs> Listen, it was not pretty. It's still not pretty, but, um, I pushed my alarm clock even earlier to make exercise part of my morning routine. And I committed to sharing the unflattering real life hyperlapse videos of said workouts, not just to keep myself accountable, but also because I firmly believe that success happens in the messy day to day, right in that imperfect progress. And I wanted to, you know, encourage my followers, as well as my clients. So I still do often share my hyperlapse videos of my workout, um, morning workouts on Instagram stories, as well as Pinterest stories. And, um, I firmly believe that success is really emboldened by the day-to-day -day grind and not just the curated highlight reels. So if you need some morning workout, follow me on Pinterest or my Instagram stories, because I do try to share them frequently there. Well, next to loving Jesus and drinking copious amounts of coffee, establishing an early morning routine is decidedly the best thing I have ever done for myself. As you can see over the last, I've been blogging for three years now, and an early morning routine has hands down been one of the most transformative habits I've been able to establish in my life. It has taken me several years of trial and error to get a productive and consistent routine figured out. And I was able to streamline some of my blogging responsibilities in the morning. Uh, for about a year, I was actually waking up at 5 a.m. each morning. And now I've been able to streamline a little bit and I wake up at 5.30 a.m. every morning and um, it's life-changing. It's life-changing. So I'm gonna share with you seven tried and true 
my tried and true tips to establish an early morning routine and transform your life and reach the goals that you want to reach. So number one, invest in a sunrise alarm. What on earth is a sunrise alarm? You may be asking, well, what it is, is it is an old fashioned alarm clock that has a light on the face of it. And it simulates the gradual light of a sunrise. Mine starts 30 minutes before 5.30. So at 5 a.m., this light starts to turn on. It's dim at first, and then it gets brighter and brighter and brighter. At 5.30, the alarm clock sounds and the light is at like full capacity. It's super, super bright. A practical advantage to a sunrise alarm is that when you tap the button to turn off the sound, it still leaves the light on. And I know this sounds really nitty gritty, but it makes a huge difference because even though it is really bright, it's still less offensive than an overhead light. So if you have a roommate, a sibling, a spouse, a partner, whoever is laying in bed with you is still probably going to be less bothered by this sunrise alarm than an overhead light being turned on. Because here's the thing. If I'm getting up at five 30 in the morning, I need light because I will take any excuse to go back to bed. So just having that light option to help me be able to get ready is, is huge. That makes a huge difference. And then mine, you tap twice to turn the light off as well. So number one, invest in a sunrise alarm. Uh, the link to the one that I use, by the way, is on the blog at hammersandhugs.com on today's um, episode show notes on the blog. Number two, place the alarm clock across the room, not on your bedside table, not within arm's reach, across the room. Force yourself to get out of bed. You snooze you lose quite literally. Again, there's been multiple research studies to show a direct correlation between a person's reported level of success in life to hitting the snooze button, meaning those who hit the snooze button make less money and report less overall satisfaction in their life. There's data to back this up. A lot of these links are also on the blog today at hammersandhugs.com on these show notes. I cannot stress the importance enough of this tip. The location of my alarm clock is on my addresser. So it is uh, at the foot of the bed. It is right uh, directly across from our bed. I have to get out of bed. I have to walk around my bed in order to turn it off. Do not hit snooze. And let me also encourage you to do this. Start training your kids early. So we talked about nature versus nurture, right? Well, my son is by nature an early morning riser. He literally came out of the womb with this internal alarm clock. I swear he gets up right around 6 30, 7 AM pretty much every morning. And he has, since he was a baby, uh, it doesn't matter how late he goes to bed at night. He gets up early. My girls, Graceland and Lillian are not so much. They are a chip off the old block. They will sleep in, um, you know, proportionate to how late they stayed up. So, you know, Gracie, who is my oldest, I have already been training her to get herself out of bed, to turn off the alarm clock. I set it across the room also on her dresser. And I have also taught her to turn the light on right away because her and uh, Lillian, they share a bedroom and they get up at the same time anyways. So she has gotten in the habit of turning. It's still a struggle. It is still a struggle. Again, chip off the old block there, but train your kids early, recognize these patterns in them and train them early. This is a simple way of helping your kids establish positive habits by helping them um, create this early morning routine. So number two, place the alarm clock across the room. Now there's one other tip that I want to state here. No cell phones in the bedroom. When I have mentioned, um, I've talked to people before about these habits. And one of the things that I get is I use my phone as my alarm clock. Y'all get an old fashioned alarm clock. They still exist. They're still out there. And there's so many benefits to not having your cell phone in your bedroom. I am going to do a whole nother podcast on the bedroom, how to establish a healthy bedroom that promotes relaxation and rest and ultimately a better night's sleep. That's coming, but listen, 
no cell phone in your bedroom. Also train your kids, right? Set them up for success. No cell phone in the bedroom. If you absolutely have to have it in your bedroom, despite the many reasons I will give you not to one day, <laughs> um, do the same thing. Set it across your room. It should not be on your nightstand. It is too, or it's too easy to roll over and turn it off. Ideally charge your phone somewhere else. For me, it's down at my desk. It's not in my bedroom. Um, my husband's still working on this. He has full intentions too. <laughs> He's not gotten around to it yet. Um, but yeah, progress, progress. Try to get your phone out of your bedroom. Okay. Number three, gradually and consistently wake up earlier, gradually and consistently wake up earlier. The mistake that many make is they jump headfirst into an earlier wake up time instead of slowly and gradually letting the body adjust to this very rude awakening. Again, you guys, if you are not naturally a morning person, the struggle is real and don't let anybody tell you otherwise for people who naturally wake up early. They cannot understand how difficult this is for those of us who are not early morning risers. It is hard. You feel like crap, frankly, when you first wake up, you can't even fathom not going back to bed, right? I've been there. Listen, I hear you. We're, we're normal people. We're normal people. Okay. <laughs> These early morning risers by nature. Listen, they're crazy, but the bottom line is don't jump way ahead and don't be inconsistent. So the point is this, the fact is, if you want to start this routine, you need to be consistent. I've had a couple people DM me and say, Hey, I'm trying to start a routine. I'm really struggling. And when I dive in a little bit, I'm finding that they're picking two days a week and they're setting it an hour earlier than normal. Okay. The problem with this is you want to set a consistent wake up and bedtime for your body. This promotes a healthier circadian rhythm, deeper REM sleep. You want to be consistent. Again, I will talk more about sleep in a different episode, but you want to actually set your alarm clock back 20 minutes earlier, Monday through Friday, than an hour earlier, Tuesday and Thursday, be consistent and be realistic a little bit at a time, just a little bit at a time. Also, if you are somebody like me who needs more sleep, you need to possibly set your bedtime a little earlier. If you are somebody like me who also needs more sleep, set your bedtime a little earlier if you need to. If you are setting it 20 minutes earlier in the morning, then set your bedtime at night 20 minutes earlier. This is also going to help promote more success when you wake up in the morning. Okay. You don't want to wake up exhausted. If you need that 20 minutes, then discipline yourself to go to bed a little bit earlier, put your phone away sooner, turn off the TV sooner and, um, set your bedtime routine ahead as well. Gradually work your way to the time of the morning that you need, that you can maintain and yet still feel rested. Again, the body's circadian rhythm prefers consistency. Don't just do it two days a week. I'm telling you, this is not going to be beneficial for you in the long run. Be consistent. Oh, and a quick note. I have had people ask me what, what time I go to bed. I realistically I'm in bed between nine and 10 PM. If I am consistently in bed later than 10 PM, I I'm very tired. It is not, it's not healthy for me. Listen, when we come back, we're going to talk about the next four tips to establishing an early morning routine after this quick break. You have tried it all. Worried you will never lose the extra weight or reclaim the energy you once enjoyed? Want to achieve fat loss without spending hours in a gym or eliminating entire food groups from your diet? Well, now you can. In the virtual Faster Way to Fat Loss with Anna, my six-week fitness and nutrition program, you will learn how to pair effective 30-minute workouts with all-natural evidence-based nutritional strategies to leverage what you eat and when you eat to reset your metabolism and burn fat fast, even that stubborn belly fat. I am a dual certified nurse practitioner passionate about teaching sustainable strategies to promote fat loss and prevent disease. I have cheered on thousands of clients who have done just that with the Faster Way program. 
In my six-week program, the average client currently sheds seven inches of body fat. 93% report more energy and 89% state that their mental health has improved. 100% of clients report they feel this program is sustainable. Curious to try the program but not sure if the strategies will work for you? Try the Faster Way strategies for free. Head to www.hammersandhugs.com and sign up for my free seven-day fat loss accelerator course today and start your own transformation story. Welcome back. We are going to talk the next four tips to establishing an early morning routine. We mentioned one through three. We are now going to chat four through seven. Number four, simple, but unbelievably effective. Set out your clothes the night before. Set out your clothes the night before. You guys, I've done several A and B tests, meaning what helps me be successful to actually stay out of bed, right? Getting out of bed isn't the problem. It's staying out of bed. I can't tell you how many times my alarm would go off and then guess what? I would end up right back in bed. Um, one of the ways that I helped prevent getting back into bed was setting out my clothes. Again, I mentioned that I initially just got up early to get work done, drink coffee, spend time with Jesus, get my head straight, my heart right. And, um, then I'd go about my merry way. Well, as time went on, I started working out in the morning. If I did not set out my workout clothes the night before I was significantly less likely to stay out of bed, even to the point where I would actually go to bed the night before in my sports bra and my workout shirt for the next morning. No lie. No lie. I did what I had to do because that made a significant difference. All I had to do was put on uh, shorts and I was good to go. Yes. I sleep with socks on at night. I have to hmm. y'all that don't sleep with socks on you. Strange, strange people. But I did, I saw a direct correlation between the success of my early morning routine and setting my clothes out, whatever it is. Maybe you're not working out first thing in the morning, but you are going uh, to work. Get dressed first thing in the morning, whatever you need to do. Don't lay around in your pajamas. Don't tempt yourself to go back into your cozy, comfortable bed. All right, make the first couple minutes of your morning routine so robotic that consciousness <laughs> remains optional. Let me say that one more time. Make the first couple minutes of your early morning routine. So robotic that consciousness remains optional. Number five, create some joy. Number five, create some joy. What on earth do you mean Anna by create some joy? What is possibly joyful? about waking up at five in the morning? Well, that's a fair question. Um, for me, it's coffee. It is no secret. I have had a passionate love affair with coffee for many, many years. I love my coffee. In fact, the other day I was doing a blog post on our coffee bar that I created. We have no less than 10 coffee machines of various sorts between grinders and espresso makers and drip coffee and percolators no less than 10. In fact, we probably have a dozen now. <laughs> okay. Y'all the obsession is real. It really is. But the point is this, the point is this coming downstairs to my cold, dark kitchen at five in the morning is infinitely better when I'm coming down to freshly ground and brewed coffee. So much so that I also found a direct correlation that if I had forgotten to set up the coffee the night before, and I would come down to realize there was no coffee ready, I would end up asleep on the couch with a blanket. I'm not kidding you. I'm not kidding you. It made such a difference. Now I'm a little bit more resilient. <laughs> okay. I've been able to establish this routine so that if I forgot to make the coffee, I'm not quite as likely to end up on the couch, but you guys, this is real life. I had to figure out some sort of way to automate my coffee situation so that I came down to a freshly brewed pot. Cause I looked forward to it. Maybe it's tea. Maybe I don't, whatever it is, maybe it's lighting a candle and just being able to spend time 
to yourself. Maybe it's playing your favorite music that nobody else in the house likes, but this is your moment to enjoy it. Fully enjoy the time to yourself. So again, for me, for me, it's coffee, but find something that gets you excited and infuse it into your morning routine. Even if it's not inherently productive, let me put this in here, because if you go Google, you know, how to create an early morning routine, it's all about being productive. But guys, if you can't stay out of bed, who cares how productive you are, right? Don't feel like you need to have this crazy to-do list that is super productive each morning in order to establish an early morning routine. Okay. Find something that you enjoy and make it happen first thing in the morning. You need to establish this habit first before you can even think about being productive and doing, you know, things that you wouldn't necessarily look forward to doing. All right. Create some joy or else you'll just end up asleep on the couch. Like I did many, many times. (laughs) All right. So where are we at? Number five, create some joy. Number six, designate phone free time. Mm, I just lost some people here. Some people hear this and they instantly go, "Ah, I can't do that. And other people need the permission to be like, yes, that's what I need to do. Okay. Well, I'm speaking to both of you. Number six, designate phone free time. Guys, I had to work at this one. I had to work because I was breaking a habit that had been formed over years and years of waking up. And first thing in the morning, I start scrolling through my phone. We just do it. We open our email. We open Instagram. We open Facebook. And I didn't have any social media at all until blogging three years ago. But even so, I would open my email. There was something, there was always something to look at. The world is at our fingertips with our phones. Um, But the fact is the phone free time is essential. It is essential. So here's what I did. Here's what I did. I, first of all, now charge my phone at my desk, which is downstairs. So I'm not opening it first thing in the morning to turn off my alarm or whatever the case may be. And I also use my phone to block schedule, not just my work day, but also my morning routine, which means I leave my phone at my desk. It is turned off. When I come down, I pour myself that coffee. I may or may not turn on some music. I do not spend this time, by the way, on a couch or somewhere that I can lay back down. (laughs) Again, learn the hard way. I sit in my desk chair. It's not incredibly comfortable, but I can still fall asleep at my desk chair, but it's still preferable than a place that I can lay down or curl up with a blanket. And I try very hard to start my day with 10 to 15 minutes of filling my mind with truth and praying. So I read my Bible and I talk to Jesus. So I was recently interviewed by authority magazine. Um, you can see the link also on the show notes today on my blog. And in the interview, I was asked how to give, um, what advice I would have on how to optimize holistic well-being. And you better believe that phone free time was on the top of that list and a simple strategy to maximize this quiet time and to prevent falling back asleep is to take a blank journal and simply spend 15 minutes each morning writing down five things that you are grateful for from the day before. You can read religious texts, you can pray, you can meditate, but the point is you need to learn to be still. Be still. In our technological world, we have lost the art of being still. My generation and those to come will have to fight for mental and emotional well-being like never before. I have a phone alarm that is then set for when I need to start working out. And it's kind of my permission to be able to open my phone and my laptop. But I start that time with everything off. My laptop is closed. My phone is off. And I do not open my phone until that alarm goes off each morning. We need to reclaim the art 
of being still. One of the simplest ways to do this, like I said, is to get a journal and just practice writing down the things that you are thankful for. Um, maybe I'll do another podcast on this, but practicing gratitude has a whole host of benefits across the entire person, emotional, social, intellectual, physical, spiritual practicing gratitude can be a life changing strategy. All right. So this is one of the easiest things to do in those early morning hours. All right. Write five things down. You are grateful for specifically from the day before. All right. Number seven, number seven, determine a clear purpose, determine a clear purpose. We have all heard the saying that passion fuels purpose. But I believe that more often than not, it is actually purpose that more effectively fuels passion. Here's what I mean by that. Passion is ultimately a series of emotions. They come and go, and frankly, they make for a very fickle master. When your decisions are grounded in a clear purpose, centered on a specific why you will be more resilient to the shifting sands of emotion. Passion is based on emotion. And I don't know about you, but frankly, my emotions are highly unpredictable and oftentimes unreliable. If you focus on your purpose, first of all, life becomes less about you especially if you can center that purpose on serving other people. And it also is highly effective when you can implement specific strategies that result in discipline in order to support that purpose, such as dun, 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 establishing an early morning routine. So what is it that you want in life? I'm asking you that right now. What is it that you want in life? Do you have a specific goal? The more specific you can be, the better. What is it that you want? Now, what is holding you back from that goal? What are barriers that you need to overcome? Are there simple things that an early morning routine could help aid you in overcoming? So for me, it was twofold. Let me give you an example of why I started this early morning routine. So in my busyness, in the day-to-day -day busyness, renovating houses, uh, when I first started blogging, I was also still working in the emergency department. I was the assistant medical director of our stroke programs that I had helped start up from the ground. And the fact was I was lacking quality time, not just to myself, but including my relationship with Jesus, which is a huge part of my life and supports my emotional, mental, and spiritual well-being. I was also beginning to lack a consistent workout routine to support my physical well-being, not to mention many other facets. You know, we'll talk about exercise and how that helps the entire person across the whole spectrum, not just physical. So coffee and this why is what made it happen. My need for quiet time and my need to establish a more consistent workout routine, because I found as the day went on, if I did not get my workout in first thing in the morning, it was highly unpredictable as to whether or not I would get it in. So the bottom line is you need to decide what it is that you want. What is a goal that you have? Whatever that goal is, be specific, be specific and start to think about how establishing an early morning routine could help you to reach that goal. And I'll leave you with this thought. You know, I, I want my children to not just remember what I say, but more importantly, remember what I do. And I want them to remember me as a woman who did not waste her life, who is willing to do the things she didn't feel like doing in order to achieve something infinitely greater. B the person who is willing to do the things you don't feel like doing in order to achieve something infinitely 
greater. Establish disciplined strategies that promote success for you to fulfill your God-given purpose. And establishing an early morning routine can help transform your life, all right, and ultimately empower whatever it is that you want to see happen in your life. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of the Imperfectly Empowered Podcast. I love being here with you. If you're catching this episode on YouTube, be sure to click the subscribe button below so you don't miss the next episode and leave a comment with your thoughts from today. What's your favorite early morning routine? Why would this be beneficial in your life? I would love to hear from you. If you're listening via your preferred podcasting platform, keep us on the air by rating our show and leave an honest review of today's episode. I truly do value your feedback. And in case you haven't heard it lately, your story matters and you are loved. This is your host, Anna Fulmer, and I will see you next time here on the Imperfectly Empowered Podcast. Thank you so much for joining us for this episode of the Imperfectly Empowered Podcast. It is my honor to be here with you. I am so grateful for each and every one of you. If you are watching on YouTube, be sure to click the subscribe button below so you don't miss a show and leave a comment with your thoughts from today's episode below. If you are listening via your preferred podcasting platform, would you help keep us on the air by rating our show and leaving an honest review of your thoughts from today? In case you haven't heard it lately, your story matters and you are loved. This is your host, Anna Fulmer, and I will see you here next time on the Imperfectly Empowered Podcast.